Today, the House held its third day of public impeachment hearings and heard from two witnesses with firsthand knowledge of President Trump's phone call with the president of Ukraine. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. It is safe to say that, politically speaking, these hearings have been very bad for President Trump. Seventy percent of Americans now say Trump's actions towards Ukraine were wrong. And since impeachment began, Trump has campaigned for two Republican candidates in deep red states, both of whom lost. Trump even specifically told voters in those states that he needed them to vote Republican to send a message that they still support him. The headlines the next day, Trump took a loss. I lift him up a lot. So Trump took a loss. So you got to give me a big win, please, okay? Okay? Why does he talk to his own supporters like they're children? <laughs> he sounds like a degenerate gambler who bet on his kid's Little League game. Come on, Tyler, you gotta give Daddy a win. <laughs> if you don't think you can get a hit, just lean in and take a pitch off your noggin, Tyler. We need this, Tyler. <laughs> and Trump's reaction to the impeachment hearing has only made things worse. Last week, Trump attacked the former ambassador to Ukraine, Marie Ivanovich, on Twitter during her testimony, which legal analysts said could constitute witness tampering. So, in advance of today's hearing, anchors on Trump's favorite TV channel, Fox News, begged him not to tweet or even watch the hearings at all. Now, if I were Trump, I wouldn't even talk about impeachment. I wouldn't tweet about it. The president should just ignore this whole thing. Don't tweet during it. Don't get outraged over it. It ticks you off. Think about that. Fox News anchors are telling the president to ignore the hearings, <laughs> even though Fox News is airing those same impeachment hearings. Fox is telling viewers not to watch them. Soon they're going to put up a banner that says, Change the channel, Nickelodeon has cartoons. <laughs> At this point, Trump's aides are going to have to distract him from the hearings by sending him on a scavenger hunt. Okay, Donald, there's a free chicken nugget hidden somewhere in the White House. <laughs> oh, oh, I bet it's in the secret vault where we hid the incriminating phone call with the president of Ukraine. <laughs> I'm coming for you, nugget. In fact, the public hearings are going so badly for Trump that Republicans who spent weeks complaining the initial depositions are being held in private are now going back to saying this should all be handled behind closed doors. Here's Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson on Sunday. One thing I want to point out is the damage that is being done to our country through this entire impeachment process. Those individuals that leaked this, you know, if, if their interest was a stronger relationship with Ukraine, they didn't accomplish this. Having this all come out into public has weakened that relationship, is, has exposed things that didn't need to be exposed. So this would have been far better off if we would have just taken care of this behind the scenes. Oh, would that have been better for you now that it's embarrassing? You want to take care of it behind the scenes? <laughs> well, what does that even mean? Look, let's just settle this in private over a few beers with an arm wrestling contest. Whoever wins, oh, damn it! <laughs> Best of luck, Nancy. Oh! <laughs> damn you, baby arms. And after this morning's hearing, you can see why Republicans wanted to handle impeachment behind the scenes, because it's been devastating for them. Today's first witnesses were Jennifer Williams, a Russia advisor to Vice President Mike Pence, who's worked for other Republican presidents, and Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman, the top Ukraine expert on the National Security Council and a decorated war veteran. They both heard Trump's phone call with the president of Ukraine. Vindman, for example, said he reported the call out of a sense of duty because it was inappropriate and improper. Both witnesses could also provide direct first-hand knowledge of even the smallest details from the phone calls, like, for example, the languages that were spoken. July 25th at approximately 9 a.m., you both were sitting in the Situation Room, and you were preparing for a long-awaited phone call between President Trump and, and President Zelensky. Do you recall what language President Zelensky spoke on this July 25th phone call? I know he made a valiant effort to speak English. He had been uh, practicing up his English. Now, of course, he could have been referring to the president of Ukraine or the president of the United States. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, President Trump tried to brush up on his English, but unfortunately, he still hasn't learned how to spell his own name right in tweets. <laughs> Hello, this is President Tatum. Yes, of the United States. Williams also testified directly about what she heard on that call, and she said she was also concerned about it. I found the July 25th phone call unusual because, in contrast to other presidential calls I had observed, it involved discussion of what appeared to be a domestic political matter. That's right. The call was unusual, both because the president of the United States pressured a foreign country to interfere in the 2020 election, and also because it was Donald Trump, and everything he does is unusual. Even the way he poses for photos is unusual. I mean... <laughs> I mean, look at him. He sways back and forth 
like a 10-year-old who really has to pee. Uh, uh, Pence told you to go before the picture. Why didn't you listen? Why didn't you listen and go before the picture? Now, Williams is an advisor to the vice president of the United States, and she heard the call herself, and yet Trump attacked her Sunday on Twitter, writing, tell Jennifer Williams, whoever that is, to read both transcripts of the presidential calls. What do you mean, whoever that is? She's an advisor to the vice president. Soon Trump's gonna start pretending he never even met Mike Pence. Oh, that guy, I thought that guy was a Halloween decoration. I, <laughs> I put a bucket of candy in his lap for trick-or-treaters. Now, in advance of the hearings, Republicans have tried to impugn the integrity and character of Lieutenant Colonel Vindman. Yesterday, for example, Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson, who we mentioned earlier, wrote a letter suggesting Vindman was trying to sabotage Trump, although he had no proof whatsoever. Johnson writes this. A significant number of bureaucrats and staff members within the executive branch have never accepted President Trump as legitimate and resent his unorthodox style and his intrusion onto their turf. They react by leaking to the press and participating in the ongoing effort to sabotage his policies and, if possible, remove him from office. It is entirely possible that Vidman fits this profile. You think he's trying to sabotage Trump? The only person who's trying to sabotage Donald Trump is Donald Trump. I mean, the guy <laughs> commits crimes, then goes on TV and confesses to them. Honestly, there's a chance he's trying to get impeached so he can collect unemployment. Check it out. <laughs> now that I've been fired, I get two weeks severance plus Cobra. Conservatives on Fox and elsewhere have also claimed that because Vindman speaks Ukrainian and because he came here as a refugee when he was three years old, he somehow has more of an allegiance to Ukraine than the United States. For example, the GOP lawyer assigned to question Vindman brought up a job offer Vindman had apparently received from a Ukrainian official, a job offer Vindman immediately dismissed as comical and reported to his superiors. Did Mr. Danny look offer you a position of defense minister with the Ukrainian government? He did. And how many times did he do that? I believe it was uh, three times. And do you have any reason why he, he asked you to do that? Uh, I don't know, but uh, every single time I dismissed it. When he made this offer to you initially, did you leave the door open? Was there a reason that he had to come back and ask a, a second and third time, or was he just trying to convince you? Yeah, uh, counsel, you know what? It, it's the whole notion is, is rather comical. Uh, I did not leave the door open at all. When he um, made this offer to you, uh, was he speaking in English or Ukrainian? Oh, uh, Mr. Daniel Luke is a uh, absolutely flawless English speaker. He's speaking okay. in English. And that would be memorable, of course, because it's rare for anyone in the Trump White House to hear someone speak flawless English. I mean, Trump knows like five words. Pence doesn't speak it at all. And I'm pretty sure Stephen Miller only communicates in demonic screams. <laughs> How are you, Stephen? <laughs> <laughs> it's true, you are a racist. <laughs> but today, during the hearing, Vindman courageously rebuffed any suggestion that he was somehow loyal to any country other than the U.S. And there was one moment where he reminded GOP Congressman Devin Nunes of his Army rank. Mr. Vindman, you testified in your deposition that you did not know the whistleblower. Uh, rank member, it's uh, Lieutenant Colonel Vindman, please. Uh, Le Lieutenant Colonel Vindman. Uh, 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 uh. Look at Nunes's face. I'd say he's bewildered, but he always looks like that. Nunes. <laughs> Looks like a waiter who just realized he forgot the specials. Uh, oh, we, uh, we have a fish and, um... It, it, come, it comes on a plate. Now, while this was happening, Trump was asked about Vindman's testimony, and Trump claimed he had no idea who Vindman was. I don't know him. Uh, I don't know, uh, as he says, Lieutenant Colonel, I understand somebody had the misfortune of calling him Mr., and he corrected them. Uh, I never saw the man. I understand now he wears his uniform when he goes in. No, I don't know Vindman at all. But Vindman, I watched him for a little while this morning, and I think he... I'm going to let people make their own determination. But I don't know Vindman. I never heard of him. What? You never heard of him? I mean, it's one thing to say you've never met him, but he's been in the news for weeks. I mean, I've never watched The Masked Singer, but I know it's a TV show. <laughs> During his Q&A with reporters, Trump also attacked House Speaker Nancy Pelosi for moving forward with impeachment. The woman is grossly incompetent. All she wants to do is focus on impeachment, which is just a little pipe dream she's got. What's going on is a disgrace. 
and it's an embarrassment to our nation. And in the meantime, we can't get USMCA approved because Nancy Pelosi is grossly incompetent. She is incompetent. She's incompetent. You failed at almost everything you've done in your life. You won an election where you got the second most votes, and you spent most of your time wandering in circles around the White House lawn <laughs> like a kid waiting for his mom to pick him up from school. I mean, look at him. Who's that? I thought he had his own helicopter. He looks like he's waiting for the bus. <laughs> Would you be taking a drag off a cigarette going, screw it, I'm walking, the MTA sucks. <laughs> and when their attacks on Vindman's credibility didn't work, GOP Congressman John Ratcliffe shifted tactics and tried to claim that no one who testified had ever specifically used the word bribery in any of their depositions. No witness has used the word bribery to describe President Trump's conduct. None of them. These aren't all of the deposition transcripts. These are just the 10 that have been released. The number of times witnesses have used the word bribery or bribe to describe President Trump's conduct in the last six weeks of this inquiry is zero. That's your argument. He can't be guilty because they didn't use that exact word. Republicans must spend all their time reading the federal code looking for crimes Trump isn't guilty of. Let's see here, extortion, guilty. Uh, fraud, you know, he's guilty on that. Uh, what about speeding? Has he ever run a red light? Damn it! <laughs> Once again, this hearing proved that Republicans have no defense. All they can do is attack the witnesses because that's what Trump wants. I wouldn't be surprised if Trump called Republicans and Fox News before the hearing and said, You gotta give me a big win, please, okay? This has been a closer look.